watch uh, the news on television uh, as if, you know, there is nothing else in the world to do. And, you know, obviously this is controversial to say for somebody who, you know, is involved in the news business oneself. But mm. I think this obsession with, with the news cycle and with political analysis um, whether it's in Urdu or in English in this country is actually quite unhealthy. And the fact that, you know, people in the, in the Supreme Judiciary are also as affected and as emotive about what they see on TV and what they hear through the news as, as regular people are is, mm. is a very dangerous, uh, wake up call. Mm. Now, Mr. Zevi, according to the Supreme Court, it'll be a clear violation of Article 6. If the government entertains any idea of withdrawing the executive order, order do you think it's premature on the part of the court to issue such an order? Well, look, the court under, under this Chief Justice has uh, developed a very unhealthy appetite for administrative meddling. Now, that is not to sort of, you know, wash away the sins of the government and the and the political administration in this country. Mm -hmm. uh, they, from day one, sort of established a, a mechanism, a political mechanism with the judiciary where they were always going to be in sort of a pitched conflict with this with this Supreme Court, with this Chief Justice. Mm -hmm. But the point is that it's not really the job of the Chief Justice or the Supreme Court uh, or any member thereof to actually sort of continuously and constantly be involved in administrative matters mm. you know even if this even if this uh, bit of news was true mm. i think uh, if the argument is that this executive order uh, from the prime minister is superseded by the judiciary's own order then what's the hullabaloo all about i mean then then clearly the ju judiciary will remain in power and and they have nothing to fear mm. and i think this constant sort of uh, you know uh, hand wringing and and hyperbole from from all sides is really just a distraction from the from the real issues and the real problems in this country and i think it's a tremendous loss for the average pakistani to have to endure this kind of thing. Certainly, certainly, Mr. Zedi. Now, uh, lastly, uh, do you think the restraining order is justified in any way? And also, why do you think that we haven't had any statement from the government? The Prime Minister apparently is too busy. Uh, if there was no such order given of a withdrawal notification, why has he not cleared his stance on this when everything is rolling in such fast motion? I think because the institutional elite of this country, you know, it's funny, uh, before it used to be just the political elite the military elite, the industrial elite, but now we clearly also have a judicial elite in this mm. country. And I think the elite is, is interested in uh, contesting with other members of the elite uh, power and space. And that's all this really is. The prime minister and, and the political government uh, of the day uh, benefit very much mm. from uh, continued attention on this issue, because as long as people are talking about this fake sort of a, you know, uh, cr crisis, mm. people won't be talking about the real crisis in this country, mm. the real crisis of national security, the crisis of terrorism, the crisis of education, of water, of flood reconstruction, of fiscal deficit, of, you know, monetary policy. Those are the issues that people should really be talking about and paying attention to. Mm. But of course, as long as these kinds of controversies are at the airwaves, then, then the government has no incentive to actually want to put an end to this. Right, thank you very much uh, for your time and your very frank comments, uh, Mr. Musharraf Zaidi, political analyst, uh, giving us his thoughts on uh, the recent rumors of a withdrawal notification, saying that these kind of tussles, whether they're fake or real, are actually detracting from the real issues being faced by the country.